Hey, hey Ross. How you doing, hey, man? Hey, buddy. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Thank you for giving me a couple minutes here. Of course. Um, just, uh, you know, the first question I wanted to ask is um, just uh, how are we able to find a balance between functionality, style, performance, and uh, sustainability with this uh, particular silhouette? Mm. Oh, wow, that's a powerful question. That's powerful. Yeah, I mean, we look at projects, you know, kind of a holy grail of projects is if you can, um, if you can work sort of science, art, and story, and bring them together, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, not every time we hit it, but we sure try pretty hard. This one, specifically in Cosmic, um, if I can date back and tell you what happened, we sat down at a, a kind of a sofa, an arrangement that sat Nike mm -hmm. um, in one of our buildings, and we had a bunch of people around. And we said, all right, we have, we have this idea starting called Space Hippie. And everybody at that time was like, what is Space Hippie? <laughs> I was like, what? What are y'all talking about? And, you know, we dive into it and we see all these really cool sort of parts and pieces and thought processes. But it was really around this mission, right? This mission and this vision of where we can go as a company. Um, and what it was, was making athletes better, athletes with an asterisk, right? Because everybody is an athlete. We all move um, and also making the planet better. And so we said, all right, let's challenge ourselves and let's think of the opportunity we have ahead. What sport can we use as one, uh, a North star and also an influencer to how we look at other sports? And boom, popped up basketball. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about story, we're not talking about anything but making ourselves better and making our choices more acknowledged in what we do and ultimately making the planet better. That's the precipice of the story. Now where cosmic comes in is that in order to do for basketball, you're going to have to think way different. <laughs> you're going to, you break all of your understanding of what you've currently done, your choices as a designer or as a developer, or as an engineer. And you also break what you've done in your factories. Because now you're dealing with a whole nother playing field. Mm -hmm. Materials, processes, methods of make, you know, efficiencies, calculations, all changes. And so we said, all right, let's think cosmically. But also we need to do it together, right? We need to collaborate. We need to go back and forth. We need to vibe off of one another. Mm -hmm. Unity. That's the narrative. Now, the art part of it, or what we would call the soul, is we, me and you, just right now, or anybody that watches, there's, there's information in and out, right? Input, output, there's a relationship, there's a conversation that we have, and it's like wavelengths sort of vibing off of one another. Mm -hmm. So that became part of why the shoe, when you see it, has all of this movement the swirl, the, the sort of iconography of communication, you know, even down into this component that has somewhat of the similar sort of, you know, kind of saying, and even into some of our iconography used in terms of frequency and vibe. Mm -hmm. So that's another part. Now we go into the other third one, which is performance, is that there is no compromise to making the best playing basketball shoe that you can make for our athletes. And in order to do that, you need to continue to edit and revise and fail, edit, revise and fail, edit and you keep going through it until you move forward, right? Because right. every time you do it, although you may fail a little bit, you're still moving forward. And that was the idea of what we were doing in terms of performance changing the script. Were, what were some of the biggest challenges you face, you know, when trying to apply this technology to, um, to a basketball shoe? Oh, whew. I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you three. One was method of make. Mm -hmm. So we needed to challenge ourselves that we reduce waste in the way that we build, but we also need to transform trash into what we're taking and cycling through our Nike grind programs. Right. Right. right? We, uh, you know, a shoe's life ends, 
we, we recycle it, we grind it up, we take the components, boom, we bring it back into this shoe. Um, but within the method of make, it became how do we create enough stability and enough support for those athletes that put such heavy sheer and impact load into the shoe. Mm -hmm. But also like, let's challenge ourselves to think of a, a very minimal to no waste type of proposition. And that's where additive method of make came from. Oh, okay. So we hacked our current machinery in our factories. We didn't want to bring in totally new machinery to the factory. So we wanted to use what we had. So we have a bunch of brilliant teammates come in there and say, look at that over there. We can use that machinery, embroidery machinery, hack it, change it, and then bring upon a new method of make, which is this cabling that goes above and below itself mm -hmm. um, that creates the, you know, a high level of stability for those athletes that are going to be, you know, putting pressures on the shoe. That's one of the considerations and the difficulties. Um, and you could tell tons of teammates involved in that. The other one was crater foam. So crater foam is our ability to take our trash, right, in the world and bring it back into our products and ex basically not create anything additional. And so in Space Hippie, this is the granule, or we call it mesh size that we used. But for basketball, we needed to adapt it. It didn't change the amount of content we used, but it changed the composition a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you can see just the sort of, you know, sprinkle size difference of this is that basketball, we needed a little bit more durability, a little bit more consistency for what the athletes were asking for. Um, so we then changed our process there as well. So um, now when the, um, you know, when Nike first started uh, coming up with the move to zero and space hippie uh, platforms, was, uh, was basketball always in the works? And, um, and if so, how do you plan to use, you know, the platform of basketball to amplify the message of environmental health? Yeah, um, basketball was always a conversation from the beginning. We know we wanted to, to really get into that because it's a global sport, right? Um, you know, I say, whether it's North America, whether it's greater China, whether it's Western Europe, whether it's Africa, whether it's, you know, anywhere, anywhere in the world, basketball is present and it's present in multiple different ways. It's present from the sport and playing it in parks and streets and arenas and courts, mm -hmm. right? It's present in style and fashion and influencers. It's present in just like sort of any cultural identification within music as well. Basketball is there. So mm -hmm. we knew that, hey, the conversation that we all need to have with one another is really big. And yes, we can focus on the sport of basketball, but let's also, you know, reach out to everybody and just have a conversation. Um, so, you know, when coming up for the design of, of this uh, particular shoe, did you draw inspiration from other sneakers? You know, I would say it was a, I, personally, I like to draw from, from method, me mm -hmm. methodology from principles of eras. And so when you go back into Nike's history within basketball, you're going to see a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. You'll see in the early parts an identification on outdoor style of play, air raid. You're going to see, you know, um, even the simplest of shoes that were Air Force One type. There's mm -hmm. a lot. But I'd say the inspiration of this was around emotive design, a way to sort of spark, you know, people's alertness which is driven from somewhat of the nineties. I think if we go back into the nineties, we're going to see a lot of shoes that are like, Whoa, what was that about? <laughs> yeah. right? And you ask questions. And so I like to think like this shoe is kind of like a, it's like a story on your foot. Mm -hmm. And so when people see it, they're either going to say, what is that? And you have the ability to sort of educate them, you know, if that's your purpose. Um, or they're going to say, Whoa, that's really cool. I know what that is. That's the conversation that talks about the world and our planet and our, you know, personal take. So, you know, that's where it came from. Inspiration driven from an era that was about motive, emotive design. You know, we already saw uh, Asia Wilson and Anthony Davis. They gave us some sneak peeks 
Uh, so they're going to be pretty much the um, the faces of this campaign or is going to spread to other athletes or um, what's the deal with that? Yeah, I mean, we uh, between Asia and uh, Anthony Davis, like we had the conversations with them about these these shoes. Right. They they wore them. They gave us feedback. You know, we had we had some really rich um, ways of sort of driving our evolution into this product. Mm -hmm. um, this is a shoe meant for the world. It's meant for everybody. The way that we designed it and the technologies that are in it um, should really take a pretty big range and a pretty big spectrum upon basketball. So, you know, we, this is a fire starter. That's what this is. It's an igniter. Um, and we should see this being played in multiple, multiple ways. And I think there's going to be something pretty special that you'll see through the, through the time of this one. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to say it because it's really it's just kind of cool when it happens and uh, uh, hopefully Hopefully you all are there and uh, to, to sort of look at it. But I would say like, you know, the colors that you're seeing right now, mm -hmm. when you dive into them, they have, a, they have a story, right? This is a story about, you know, emotive 90s style kind of thought process, right? Mm -hmm. Being inspired by our eras. This is a story about, about space hippie and the fundamentals and the principles that we've driven out of our first mission. And then this is a story that if you looked at the world from a different vantage point, you're gonna see earth, you're gonna see heat mm -hmm. from the sun, and you're also gonna see water. And that's a different way to look at a product. It's a different way to look at the shoe. Um, and you can kind of see it all come together in the swoosh. So, um, so what's the future of the Cosmic Unity line? Are we gonna see you know, multiple uh, sneaker models um, and then as far as apparel, you know, are they going to, um, is Nike going to kind of, uh, you know, move that technology onto uniforms or for pro leagues that they outfit? Yeah. I mean, I think what, what you're sensing is like with, with understanding a mission and a vision of where you want to go as a sport, as a company, you're going to see more influence mm -hmm. across the range, across the range of products, um, what stems from what, how, you know, one idea births another idea. And you, you can see sort of the spread, right? You start to see it in Space Hippie and into Cosmic Unity. And so these influencers that we allow to happen within Nike are just making us better. And it's not only through footwear, but it's apparel. I would also say there's two ranges to look at this. One, which is overt, right? Mm -hmm. Overtly, you know what this is. There's another one, which is covert. And it's things that like you may not see, but they're embedded with the same principles i.e. this rand, right? Doesn't look like maybe anything different, but the characteristics and the chemistry level of this, mm -hmm. yeah, way different. So, you know, we also know like there's some, the range of our athletes and our consumers, they want things that are loud. They want things that are, you know, softer in their voice. So, you know, we'll, we sort of tie those, those edges together. You know, with Nike, they're, their brand is already huge in the world and their reach is, is far, but um, just how, how important is it to you for platforms such as, you know, made for the W and other um, entities to be involved with helping promotional efforts of new sneakers and getting out to consumers? Yeah, um, that's cool. Uh, you know, your, your company in yourself has a giant influence, right? I mean, you have the conversation and you make it something um, that a lot of people pay attention to. By, the, by Made for the W, like you're influencing a whole group. And I think that's where it becomes really exciting mm -hmm. is that without teammates, without partners like yourself and your company, that's where we can also make a huge difference. So, you know, truthfully, we appreciate you very much. Um, we appreciate what you do. We appreciate you sort of, you know, working this message through um, and giving some awareness to to people that may not know, that may not have seen it. Man, I, I just got the shoe today. It's, it's awesome. I can't wait to play in it. You know, it feels super light. Um, but yeah, man, definitely appreciate you. And I look forward to talking to you some more.